Hello everybody and welcome to Democracy 4. I am KRX and we're going to be taking a look at this. This is something that we did highlight on the Twitch channel, but I wanted to archive it for the YouTube as well for anyone that might have missed this stream. I've never played the Democracy series before. I was lucky enough to get a copy from uh, provided by the developers and also Mo uh, GOG itself. So GOG was kind enough, goodoldgames.com was kind enough to uh, provide us the key to take a look at this. Uh, they have the uh, Democracy 4 DRM free, which is actually pretty sweet. And it is in development right now, so they have their own sort of in-development tag to show that the game is not finished yet. Uh, whereas on Steam, it would be just under the early access system and so on and so forth. So this is in development right now, and there's going to be more uh, policies and events and nations coming uh, coming soon. But right now, what's in the game seems to be relatively fully fleshed out from what I can tell. I haven't ran into any, like, uh, bugs or anything like that. Just some things I'm, I'm sort of confused about just as a new player to the to the franchise. But for the most part, uh, after sort of learning the core flow of the game and the UI and everything like that, I've been able to feel like I can play the game and have, have a good time. It's a very thinky game, very thinky game about running uh, different democracies around the world. Um, you can essentially, if we hit new game here, we can see that we can play as the United States. Uh, the president of the united states or the prime minister of the uk or you know president of canada and uh, president of france or, or prime minister of germany right so we could pick these different nations here they all have their own different sort of demographic uh distribution at the beginning of the game and that affects what the people want right so people in the united states might find one policy to be very popular but in france it could be absolutely uh, opposed, right? The citizens of France might not like the same policy that the Americans might like, and vice versa, and so on and so forth. So these different uh, demographics present different sort of uh, demands of the people, right? A different they they expect a different sort of uh, society essentially to represent their needs and their desires and their wants. Um, but so you're worrying about uh, satisfying people so that you can get reelected because you do need to get reelected. That's how you lose the game if you don't get reelected, or you can also get assassinated by radical groups. Um, the other thing is you're trying to worry about your country's economy, right? So uh, making sure the, the country physically stays afloat and doesn't sort of uh, devolve into crises. There's a bunch of different crises that can happen that uh, could be affecting the economy or other such things. And that tends to be a, a big factor uh, as well in terms of the things that you have to manage. And I'd say the third thing that you're trying to do in this game is kind of, you know, if, if economy is one and satisfying the people and getting reelected is the second, the third thing is you're trying to kind of shape society in the way that you want. You could make a completely uh, a, a communist society if you wanted to in the game. You could make a completely libertarian society if you wanted to in the game. You could go full conservative or full liberal or whatever you want to do. So you can try to actually sway the demographics. You could try to actually ease into those different things and transform society and, and kind of create your own sort of like uh, either meme country or uh, uh, utopia country or whatever, whatever you want to do. And you can test out whether or not that system would work. You know what I mean? And, and in within the simulation of the game. But ultimately, it is a game. And uh, that means that things are, uh, you know, that a lot of it is very, very smart in the way that it thinks about things. But nothing is, is you know, it is still a simplification of the real uh, situation. And, and obviously, certain things have to, within the context of the game and the mechanisms in the game, certain policies and things that do certain things. But maybe it doesn't fully express all of the effects of, of what something would be or completely account for the exact outcome of a situation and stuff. But for the most part, the game tries to do at least a thematic justification of what happens when you enact certain policies and you pers push a certain agenda and stuff like that within these different country ecosystems. Let's actually try the UK. So uh, we tried France originally on the stream. We actually failed. Like that was a disaster. This game is very difficult in my experience. I haven't played Democracy before, so maybe it's just because I'm completely new. But I feel like this game is, is very, very tricky. Um, Canada was, was we were able to succeed as Canada once we failed as France and switched to Canada. We were able to succeed. I'd like to maybe do uh, the United States in the future, maybe do kind of a goofy run uh, with the United States and do something kind of uh, funny and strange with them. Because I think the United States is probably actually one of the countries that's most likely to be transformed into any direction. Whereas a lot of these other countries, we, we, we would think of them, a relative of the United States, I'm an American, of course. So relative to the United States, these countries would be more sort of uh, liberal uh, in their sort of uh, ideologies and stuff as citizens, as, as actual people of the country. Whereas the United States would be um, more split between sort of uh, liberal ideals and, and conservative ideals and stuff like that. But maybe actually even more, again, relative to these other countries, more conservative. So I feel like it's more, the United States is more likely to be able to get shifted uh 
like it'd be kind of hard to take France and make it a total like uh, shift France into a conservative society. That'd be kind of hard to do because everything's already structurally set up uh, in, in a different way. Um, and the game tries to simulate that sort of starting position for these countries. Anyways, let's move on. So the point is, I'm excited to do like maybe like a theocracy, like a make it turn America into a theocracy or something like that. That'd be kind of interesting, right? Just to see how the game would handle that and how we could do that in the game. But let's start as, as England and let's see what's going on here. And we can make our own parties here. And actually, uh, what the heck? Let's make uh, let's make the uh, the granola gang here. So we will be the the granola gang, and that will be good enough here. I'm just going to set all this down to uh, to basically the default here. But we could adjust some of these metrics. But these metrics should be based on uh, the real life data somehow. You know what I mean? Like like the voter turnout is the vo is the political apathy. I think it has a relationship to that. Like how much the citizens actually care. They're involved or tuned in and affected by things uh, that the country does and also i think um the debt or whatever should be based on um it's not it's not accurate because i've checked some of these numbers they're definitely not completely accurate but i think there's at least some basis in reality so congratulations on your election we have won we are now the prime minister of the uk and we are the lives of 63 million citizens are now in your hands as you will imagine there are uh, a number of situations and concerns that you will need to deal with as soon as possible while keeping an eye on the long-term improvement of our citizens quality of life please do not forget that you face re-election in five years uh, you will need to monitor the opinion polls and a party membership good luck general sort of breakdown of our education poverty crime health unemployment and gdp gdp looks like it's at least sort of green uh, but here we go we got some crises the crises are in red but this, essentially this is the game and all of these represent policies that are already enacted or sort of like um, things that maybe just like, you know, just general sort of basic things that every country is going to have, like a police force, right? Every country is probably going to have a police force, but how well funded is this police force? How well armed is this police force, right? Like, um, is this relating to... This, I think, is relating to funding, right? So this is the funding for the police force. So you can go into here and you can slide these things around and we can adjust this. We can lower police funding. We could raise police funding and that will have an effect on these different metrics and stuff like that. We can hit this back arrow here to back out. So basically these are these are either um, services that are just in in place by just sort of like as a default and then you can adjust, raise and lower those things or they're actual specific policies and subsidies and initiatives that can then be completely removed. Like if there's an alcohol tax here, presumably we could just cancel this alcohol tax or we could raise it or lower it, right? So the alcohol tax has a certain amount of effect being in effect, and then it can be, you know, based on the percentage, it'll have more or less of an effect in terms of the income that we can earn from the tax, and also in terms of reducing alcohol consumption and so on and so forth. Of course, if we, re if we reduce consumption, we also kind of effectively in the, in the long term, the, uh, the income will actually drop too, right? If people use alcohol less, then they'll pay less in that tax and so on and so forth. In red, though, we have these different crises, these are things that are specific to the UK at the start of the game that we have to solve. This one's flashing. This is an obesity crisis. And we can see that we have we have an issue with obesity in this country and it's affecting health and it's increasing demand. So green is increasing. Red is decreasing. So health is decreasing. Healthcare demand is increasing, but that's not a good thing, right? That's not a good thing that healthcare demand is increasing. The strain on our healthcare services is going up. But it's green just to say that it's increasing. So green is an increase, red is a decrease. It has nothing to do with good or bad. Decreasing crime is a good thing, right? Decreasing crime is a good thing, but this is showing red, but it's just showing it's decreasing crime. So you want crime to be low, so you want to decrease it. Um, we have, these are our political advisors in the middle here. We can see a couple of these guys are, are a little bit unhappy with us personally, and maybe they're giving us less oomph and power because they're unhappy with us. We could swap them out potentially. We also have the blue here is basically just different sort of uh, results of things. Like like one of these would result with, uh, one of these would be our unemployment value if we could find it somewhere. This is just like car usage, I think, but or the uh, car usage, bus usage, you know, so if bus us usage gets, in, if we can enhance bus usage, it decreases car usage. You can see that the bus um, right here, the bus us usage here is, is sending a, a red bar, a decreasing red bar to car usage. So because we have a certain amount of bus usage, it's pulling down car usage. 
car usage is also decreasing the environment down here. We can see the things that are increasing or decreasing environment. Game hunting restrictions, so protecting uh, the wildlife uh, from uh, having certain hunting restrictions. Is it boosting environment? Recycling pollution controls, car emission limits. These things are increasing the environment, helping the environment. Clean energy subsidies, so on and so forth. GDP, though, is actually decreasing it, right? So the fact that we just have a strong GDP, just activity, economic activity, people, commotion, businesses, growth, um, you know, transportation, stuff like that in general is actually sort of a strain on the environment uh, just as, as the economy booms and grows. Um, but GDP here, we can see that it affects like everything. It's affected by everything. It's just incredibly uh, important in terms of our ability to, um, just a metric in terms of our ability to, to earn, uh, you know, income. We are running a 5 billion pound deficit right now. We have a 2 trillion pound uh, debt, our income right now and our expenditures. So, so this is showing our income and expenditures. We could try to uh, increase our income. We could try to decrease our expenditures. We could to in order to get a surplus instead of a deficit. Although maybe deficit spending is not that big of a deal, it could lead to issues eventually if our debt was to increase. Uh, you know, pot potentially beyond our our GDP. We could actually go into this tab over here to see. Uh, different sort of economic uh, aspects like we're kind of we might concerned about um, debt interest right how much we're paying seven billion pounds on debt interest so presumably if we could get rid of the debt which would be incredibly difficult to do because it's two trillion uh, pounds right but if we could get rid of the debt then presumably we wouldn't have debt interest and we'd actually be making a surplus right now if it wasn't for debt interest but there's other aspects here like military spending and and so on and so forth, state pensions and stuff. And we could try to affect these things um, by reducing them or, or whatever. Or we could go to the route of increasing income. We go to this chart here and there's a way to, there should be a way to see. Maybe I'm being a doofus here. I thought there was a way to see relative uh, GDP related to debt. Oh, here it is. So yeah, basically our uh, debt GDP ratio is 97%. Um, yeah, so our debt is coming up on our GDP. Um, I'm not an economist, but uh, apparently that's supposed to be kind of a scary thing. Um, although I think, you know, everybody's, been, the whole thing is like everybody's been scared. Anyways, we'll, we'll, we'll move on from that. Basically, it's, it's to, I guess it's to be seen whether or not, you know, that's going to be an issue. In the game, that's an issue. In the game, uh, if our debt creeps up and, and sort of uh, explodes past our GDP, it, it causes uh, different crises and our, our currency is affected and so on and so forth. So not good. So we have these other things here. We have organized crime. And we can see the things that actually affect organized crime. We can see gambling is increasing organized crime. So gambling activities are increasing organized crime. The intelligence service is actually trying to push organized crime down. We could actually go into this and be like, okay, the intelligence services, we could fund this more. So we could pay half a billion pounds. So apologies if I say dollars at one point, half a billion pounds, and we could actually bring down organized crime pretty significantly. Pretty, We could double the effectiveness of what it's doing for us right now. We could bring down just regular crime. Liberals will hate this. Liberals will hate this because we're spying on them. We're uh, Patriots are going to be okay with it though, because uh, it's, you know, I guess it's just you know, getting rid of it, just, just really happy that we're, we're, you know, getting rid of crime and everything like that. So over here, so we have all the policies that are in play here. We have the different sort of uh, over uh, metrics like stability and GDP and stuff that are affected by the policies. We have the crises that have popped up specifically because we've hurt, hit certain thresholds, a negative thresholds, different crises have come up, like this is respiratory disease. And we have a hospital overcrowding. We have a doctor strike. We have the obesity, and we also have uh, the uncompetitive economy. That's that's a big one because that's negatively affecting our GDP. Over here, we actually have these different bars that represent how we can organize our people. So everyone's in the everyone category, right? Everyone is part of everyone. But we can see that most of our country is actually majority of our country are capitalists. That is not this, you know, diametrically opposed with liberals, though. So this is using the correct sort of. Uh, breaking down of liberal versus conservative, capitalist versus sort of a socialist mindset. Um, so most of our citizens are capitalists, 
but they're liberal capitalists. Liberal capitalists. So in a sense, they're kind of libertarians, right? Kind of a libertarian mindset a little bit. Although, of course, uh, we do know that there is still, um, a str you know, the UK has a lot of uh, strong uh, sort of uh, social services and things like that, that the citizens do appreciate and do love. But apparently uh, self-proclaimed uh, capitalists and liberals here, mostly. The liberals like us. The capitalists don't like us that much, to be honest. That's a huge majority of our country, and they don't like us right now. But the liberals love us. There's a little bit of wiggle room to make them a little bit more unhappy, and we'll, maybe we'll be able to uh, to bring up the capitalists a little bit uh, with some of the policies that we can enact. Over here, this is a big button here, this, this idea thing, is this is how we can implement new policies. So we can go here, and we can click through the different sort of categories here, and there's tons of different stuff here, and we can click on these different things. It's important to note that if you hit this button, you are committing to activating this policy. You cannot test out what this is going to look like. So if I say, I want the fuel efficiency standards, you hit implement, boom, it's 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 implemented. You can't sort of preview this. I think that's a huge flaw. I hope they fix that in the development. Uh, whereas over here, like once it's on the board, once it's quote, quote, in play, you can come here and I can just preview this and see, do I really want to do that? Do I not want to do that? And I can just hit this arrow to undo anytime I want. The thing that we have to, the limit on what we can do is based on our political capital, which is generated by our cabinet members. So these are our cabinet members here, and we can click on this button up here in the top right to open up our cabinet. These people are a little bit weaker. We could try to sh uh, shift these people around. So we could just fire, we could spend a, f a small amount of political capital to just fire these people. Although I'm noticing that's making these other people not like us as much. We're just going to reshuffle the whole cabinet. Forget it. You're getting fired. You're all getting fired. So we're going to do that to start things off. So we could slot new people in. Let's hire someone for this position. So this is for foreign policy. We could just look for someone who actually wants foreign policy job. And they have a good amount of political capital here. One point uh, two is pretty low. One point three, that's pretty low. This is a one point seven down here. That might be the best we can find for uh, foreign policy. It's it's still a little better than what we had. Let's hire this person. So getting a good amount of this person's a two point that wants to work on welfare. That's another two point for welfare. There's a two point one here for welfare as well. That's a that's a good strong. Uh, advisor there. So I'm just going through, I'm just looking for these. I, I don't know what to do. We could also look over here at their ability at campaigning experience. These will help us in the elections. If they're really good at campaigning, that could be really good. These are the groups that they reach out to. So like capital, oh, this is a liberal capitalist. Uh, this guy has a very low uh, skill down here, but man, this guy hits the notes, right? Most of our country believes them, uh, identifies themselves as a liberal capitalist or at least liberal or capitalist. Maybe not. It doesn't, just because they're, they could be a capitalist they could be a poor capitalist motorist, commuter. You know what I mean? They could be multiple different things. Just because this doesn't represent like, it doesn't, it, it just means 60% of our, our citizens say that they're a capitalist. It doesn't mean that all these things have to add up to 100%. You're not just one thing. So this guy would actually be really good because of that mix there. This person though is a little better on the economy. They, the liberals like them, or they'll, they'll appease the liberals and the environmentalists. What about this person down here to 1.9? Commuters and the poor. Now, a lot of our country is actually uh, commuters and poor. But their skills are a little bit lower here. However, law and order. We might we might get them in later. This person's just got a little bit more skills in the area. This person's a 2.0 with tax, conservatives, and middle income. I don't think we have that many conservatives, right? We only have like 35% conservatives. But that's still a 2.0. Middle income, we probably have a lot of middle income, I, I would imagine. So, you know what, let's get that person in. Into this role. I'm just making sure they like the job that they're getting placed into. Okay, actually, I would have placed this person because it's a 2.0 welfare. Do we have... Or did they want to do law and order? Or transportation? Did they want to do law and order? Self-employed the youth, we probably don't have many. Uh, Self-employed in the youth, but let's just get this person in there anyways. 1.6 down here, not great. We're kind of running out of good people here. Uh, tax, law and order, uh, public services, and then transport. Unfortunately, we're kind of 
not getting anyone that's going to love it here. Here's a capitalist and middle income. This person is going to be pretty good. So we'll just slot them in there. And then there's this 1.6 there. So this is a better cabinet, right? But we had to spend political capital to do that. In fact, I actually wasted two, right? Because we fired two of these people earlier. We have these people in slot. They like us now. They're gonna be, we're going to get more political capital in the future. We have six political capital right now. We could just bank that and go to the next quarter. So you play quarters at a time. So we could do four quarters. And we have Basically, we have 20 quarters before the election. Right now, we have to worry about some of these issues here. Competitive economy, this is clearly a problem. Um, we can see the corporate tax is increasing the competitive economy. We want to decrease it. We want to get this down. Um, productivity uh, helps bring it down. So we could look at some of the ways that uh, productivity, like we could try to increase education. We could try to increase technology, right? And we can look and we can keep clicking on these things to cross-reference these different things. Nuclear fission, right? This is something we can invest. We could decide to invest in nuclear fission which would uh, radically increase, it would increase GDP instead of decreasing it. The environmentalists would not like this. However, oil demand would go down, which is good. Uh, CO2 emissions would go. I think that should go down. I think that should go down. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that's saying there, to be honest. Um, I think the CO2 emissions should go down and then the uh, technology should go up and just in terms of that. So that could actually be worthwhile, um, although quite honestly, it would cost billions to invest in that. France is, has a lot of really awesome nuclear uh, power in France, which is why they sell energy to the UK. Um, France actually exports energy because they have, they have, France has as many nuclear power plants as the United States, which is crazy. Um, Anyways, we could actually go into here. We could try to look for some different things here. Uh, in the economy, I don't know. Can we can we enact some import tariffs? Could actually be really good. We don't have the political capital for this, but this actually will bring down the uncompetitive economy. Uh, import tariffs. So basically, it makes it so that we're uh, import tariffs basically uh, increase the cost of imported goods, um, so that it gives our local businesses. Uh, a more even battle, basically. Uh, if we have to, if our goods cost more because we're paying our workers more and we give them more benefits, we have to make the imported goods cost a little bit more too. Um, I believe the the tariffs themselves basically are paid for by. Anyways, yeah, basically, yeah. So import tariffs will bring that down. That was what I'm trying to say. And so on, and do some other things. Capitalists won't like it though, right? So on and so forth. So. And we do have to worry about the capitalists because they already don't like us. What could we do with the six political capital? We could just bank this. That's not a problem. I mean, Sierra Maximus 36. We're only gaining about uh, 19 per turn. Let's just let's just go to the next phase. So we haven't actually done anything besides we reshuffled our cabinet. Let's go to round two here. Okay, click to return to the government here. So we can see nothing's really happened. Um, it's only quarter one, right? The quarterly report here. We can see that there's some different things going on. Poll reports, economic forecasts. A situation imminent. Environmental protests. Pretty, potentially bad situation with the environmental protests. Okay, so th this could t technically trigger. If this goes, if we do something to, um, if we do something to hurt the environment, this could unfortunately um, trigger the environmental protest, which is going to be something, just another crisis that we're going to have to deal with. Ban tobacco adverts. What is this? There is a proposal for a law to outlaw the advertising of tobacco on television, although it would remain legal to advertise on billboards and other means. A TV ban is seen as a potential way to reduce smoking by our citizens. We reject, reject the ban. There is no 100% uh, proven evidence that tobacco is anywhere near as harmful as some pressure groups claim. Millions of our citizens enjoy a smoke without serious ill effects. And this is uh, an example of a nanny state trying to tell people what to do. It's their body and their decision. So liberals for sure would absolutely prefer us to not ban this, right? Liberals, as in they want uh, society to have less regulation and just sort of, you know, uh, basically people to have more freedoms and society to have less sort of like uh, less regulation and stuff. 
in terms of people's ability to choose and, and people's that includes companies ability to advertise and market and stuff like that smoking kills millions of people prematurely every year it definitely increases uh, healthcare uh, demand and stuff like that right and we have some issues with our healthcare system right now we have obesity issues which i don't know if smoking ties into that or not but we do have respiratory issues that was another one of our crises and that is affected by tobacco use so bringing down uh, tobacco use if this could reduce tobacco use that could be really good for us so tobacco use is going to go down by 19 percent. but the liberals are going to hate this uh, but i think we are going to approve the ban we are going to not allow for advertising of tobacco products on television is that actually something that, that's done in the UK? Because uh, in the United States, that's actually been uh, banned for a long time, I think. That's interesting to me. So that actually will bring down, right? If we can bring down tobacco use, if we could bring this down, it'll actually bring down the respiratory disease. You can see that because of our decision right there, it should start trending down a little bit because tobacco use should be trending down. As we could do some awareness campaigns to help with that. We could do a tobacco tax. We could increase the tobacco tax. It would be very expensive to actually raise this up all the way, though. Oof. That would be billions of pounds of additional income. Holy cow, this could be amazing. This does hurt the poor. This increases poverty and it hurts the poor because uh, disproportionately, right, uh, people that want to have a smoke, um, that are going to have a smoke regardless, um, if, they're, um, if they're poor, they're more devastatingly affected by this additional tax. If we actually go to here, our max is, is hmm. I think we increase the tax one step and then we can increase it to the next step in the future. So let's raise this up. This will actually help us with our economy too. So I think we actually do uh, try to reduce tobacco um, consumption. That will help bring down the respiratory disease quickly. We are worried about this obesity crisis. We can see that uh, food prices are actually bringing it down because so if we were to actually subsidize uh, food and make food cheaper, people would, I guess, eat more. We do health food subsidies. This is a pretty easy thing to implement. And we just crank this up to the top. And this actually, what this could do is could bring down obesity massively. So if we find that, where did we just put that in? Health food subsidies, here it is. Yeah, so we have it at the very tippy top. Uh, health uh, goes up. That's fantastic. That'll bring down the strain on the health system um whoops yeah okay so that is still in play good so if we go back here what else can we do here uh, public services healthy eating campaign these are relatively cheap it only costs like a hundred million pounds i mean it's nothing it's absolutely nothing apply so we've lost our political capital but we should have enacted those two different things the health campaign where did that show up is that show up here so again, that's going to bring down obesity. It's going to raise up health. Bringing health up is going to reduce reduce the overcrowding also in the um, overcrowding in the hospitals. If we if health healthcare demand because because healthcare demand goes down, if health improves, healthcare demand goes down. If healthcare demand goes down, overcrowding the hospitals goes down. Private healthcare brings this down state healthcare services bring this down so we could try to increase state healthcare services incredibly expensive but quite honestly this would help us with the doctor strike if we could increase um, um health state uh funded health care provisions if we could increase funding to this it's again 10 billion pounds right now we are running about a 1 billion pound surplus which is kind of nice um, but this would put us into the deficit for sure, but lots of beneficial things if we can do this. I mean, really, if you could just crank this up, it is, it is good. Obviously the capitalists don't like it. Um, the wealthy don't like it. It decimates the private healthcare industry, which cancel the private healthcare industry does probably tie into GDP pretty strongly. So, you know what I mean? In terms of, uh, more sort of uh, profitable jobs, of course, you know, whether or not, uh, healthcare services should be based on the profit margin or not is based on your own your your own sort of ideals for what you think in, are included in human rights and what isn't. Organized crime here. This is coming down. We didn't actually increase. Did we actually increase? 
intelligence services? I think we should. We don't have the political capital to do that, but I think we should. That's going to cost a little bit. But we're running a surplus, which is kind of cool. So either way, we have organized crime is going down. Obesity should start going down with some of the health, healthy food campaigns and subsidies and stuff we've done. Um, we also increase the tax for tobacco. That's good. Respiratory de disease should be coming down with that. We do have to worry about the environment, though, because it seems like the environment is its actually trending up a little bit, which is great. We could look into reforestation. That's usually kind of a fun one to do. Um, the UK probably could use some, some reforestation, if, assuming they have some place to do it. Um, I don't know what actually the UK is doing in terms of reforestation, but that could be kind of neat. Bring back the forest a little bit. Let's go to the next. Uh, let's go to the next thing. And I will say, actually, at this point, guys, this could be a fantastic place to end episode one. We've already done two quarters. One quarter was just reorganizing our cabinet. The second quarter was enacting some policies to take care of some of these crises. We're making a surplus. That's good. Maybe the UK is actually a good beginner nation. Holy cow, we're already making a surplus. That's crazy. Just taxing people more for their tobacco. That's a that's a booyah right there. I mean, people hate us still, right? We haven't worked on public opinion, but we're trying to take care of the things that are ailing the country. And presumably, if we can help these things, these crises that are ailing the country, then presumably uh, that will help public opinion, right? So if we could point to these things and say, hey, you know, we're doing it. Oh, no, the GDP is going down, though. GDP is on the decline. An uncompetitive economy is definitely probably not being helped. We need to look into those import tariffs and some other things that we can do to help with that. So thanks everybody for watching this first episode of this first look and sort of playthrough and gameplay for Democracy 4. There will be a playlist down below. If you guys have any questions, please ask in the comments. Thanks everybody for being here. If you guys have any thoughts or suggestions, I'd love to, uh, to hear them in the comments. And I will respond to the, any of the questions and comments down there as well. Thanks, everybody, for, for watching. I will see you guys in the next episode as we continue on as the Prime Minister of England, trying to solve the issues and, and create a utopia here in England. Or, sorry, the UK. The UK.